It's time for Beaver Chat on KMSU Radio with your host, Nathan Bartz. Welcome to Bitter Beaver Chat. I am Nathan Bartz. You are listening to Beaver Chat. I am talking with Minot State's basketball team about their upcoming season. I'll be able to catch up with the new men's basketball head coach, plus the two returners for the team. They also had an exposition game against another level Blue Angels. Uh, they beat them 81-67. to I-, I personally thought that they were a like a Harlem Globetrotters team, but they are not. They are from the Seattle area. They are a club club team. They're just a club team, so anybody who plays, who wants to continue playing their basketball career can't make it to the NBA <laughs> or any other professional level uh, game. So, Joining me today is the new coach, Coach Matt Merkin. Here is Coach Merkin. Yeah, the, you know, the nice thing about coming into this position right now is that it's an exciting time uh, in the athletic department. Uh, it's also a challenging time, and, and those two things are uh, built together because of our move to NCAA Division II. It's a, definitely a, a step up from, from the NAI level that uh, we've been at in the past, and it's just you know, on a daily basis and a nightly basis you're going to be playing against bigger, stronger, uh, more athletic uh, competition, and uh, it's a league I'm familiar with from six years that I spent at Wayne State College, uh, who's in the South Division of our of our league. So I'm pretty familiar with the with this type of play that we'll be up against and you know in the NSIC number of sports, you know, football, volleyball, men's basketball, there's been numerous national titles. So um, regardless of what sports you're in, you're gonna be challenged. Um, you're gonna face ranked teams regularly. Uh, you're going to teach, face teams that are really well coached, and, and there's been a, a number of coaches in our league that have been uh, at their present position for a long time, and those guys have been really successful. So it's really exciting challenge for us, but it's also something that, that makes us have to continue to improve. And coming out of the transition period, it was a challenging time uh, moving from NAI to D2 as far as trying to increase the overall level of play and increase our talent level uh, for all sports and then couple that with the, with the scheduling difficulties that you face when you're an independent and you know in, in multiple sports have to travel literally all over the country to play games and, and well, those other schools know that, that you're at a disadvantage they know you need games so they're not going to go out of their way to do a favor and, and come to Minot and play unless they unless they really have to so it's been tough in, in a lot of different ways over the last couple of years of just making that transition and now we're excited to, to be full fledged of the Northern Sun we know we have a lot of things that we have to continue to get better at. We have to uh, upgrade our, our talent level. Uh, we have to uh, kind of settle into you know the, the unknown a little bit here, and, and, and knowing the competition level that we're faced, just have to get the guys as prepared for that as possible. And then they're going to be learning on the fly once we get to that point in time and start playing those teams night in and night out. Uh, but for us, it's really really a lot of excitement. Yes, yeah, challenging. Yeah, there's going to be some ups and downs, but in the long run, it's going to be a great move for our university, a great move for our athletic department, and, and some of those worries that might not stay had when they were in the state, or it might be, we're going to develop some new rivalries, uh, you know, Mary's right down the road in our conference, and, and Moorhead and some of those other teams that will we'll begin to kind of step forward as our new rivals, and I think that's going to be a lot of fun for our, both our student-athletes and also for our fan base. Uh, I know that uh, no one can see the future, predict the future. Do you, what do you think this season is going to look like? Yeah, the, you know, the biggest challenge for us is just uh, with Coach Stewart resigning late in the summer and then having to go through a national search uh, for a new coach coming in really the end of July. It's not a lot of time for me to get to know the team and for the team to get to know me. You add on to that the fact that we have six guys that are new to our program. We have four guys in our program that were here last year but didn't play sat out uh, in a redshirt that's 10 guys that didn't play basketball here last year then you add six more on our roster that did play basketball here but they're in a completely new league with a completely new coaching staff so there's a lot of getting to know each other uh, and what each other's expectation levels are and building trust between coaches and players and, and, and players and coaches that takes a little bit of time and we're certainly moving in the right direction but because of some of the rules that are in place at the NCAA uh, our time on the 15th, we only have two hours a week, and we've got better in some regards. But we, until we started practice a week ago, we haven't really been able to be out there full time. Uh, we're, we're seven practices in now. We've gotten a lot better again, but we're still, it's a new system that guys need to learn both offensively and defensively. And then also really trying to just understand what I expect on a day-to-day basis uh, as far as effort level, uh, as far as attention to detail. And we need to improve in all those things. The guys are, are making a good effort, uh, but we need to continue to get better uh, in order to be competitive in, in this in this league. And, you know, the nice thing is we've about once a week right now in our preseason, we've got uh, a challenge against an outside team. We'll, we'll scrimmage uh, at the end of this week. We'll scrimmage 
North Dakota the end of next week, and then then we'll go on the road uh, out to Denver and play our first counting games that first weekend in November, and play against two teams that are in the top ten in the country. So uh, we'll be challenged early, and, and uh, as I mentioned, our league's really difficult as well. So we'll have a lot of a lot of uh, challenging games as we get going here early, and that'll really let us know early on in the year. I know you have a lot of new players. Obviously, we have new. You have a whole new assistant coaching staff. Uh, what's it like been working with them right now? It's been a lot of fun uh, for me, and I think for our, for our coaching staff. Uh, in, in some ways, we have some familiarity in our staff. Uh, Coach Jones uh, played for me at Jamestown for the last two years. He's been a great addition to our staff uh, because he understands what I expect from players, and he just got them playing. So he's been a good resource to kind of know where I'm coming from and, and to talk to the guys about what we expect on a day-to-day -day -day basis, what they need to do to get better in, in the system that we run on both ends of the court. Jack Nelson is our uh, top men's assistant. He, he comes from Bellevue University last year. Prior to that, he was saying about that as Sioux Falls was uh, – going through a transition stage as well, so he's familiar with uh, the, the teams that are in our league from playing against them and also the NCAA rules, so that's been a great uh, asset for him to kind of hit the ground running. And then Bobby Howard is another assistant that we added that uh, uh, played at uh, Montana State and then has been playing professionally the last couple of years before he decided to go back to school and, and uh, pursue his master's degree and, and, and pursue a full-time coaching career. So we have a nice mix of different guys in our staff. We've been, you know, thrown together late and really – I've asked a lot of them early on here as far as um, recruiting still for this past year, getting some guys into school there that last month uh, and getting them settled in, and then also uh, to hit the ground running with our current players and then starting to recruit and, and be out on the road looking at kids to bring in uh, for the following year and the year after that. So really a lot has been crunched into the last two or three months with our coaching staff. And then, you know, with the guys that we've added, it's been, you know, one fun thing has been just getting to know, know those guys both on and off the court and getting – seeing them get a little bit more comfortable with us but also with each other uh, and that's another thing that you know a lot of those guys with six of those guys being new uh, you need to fit those guys together and, and fit guys from all over the place into a team you know we've got I think seven, about uh, six guys from somewhere else in the, in the U.S. and a four international guys so we've got guys from a wide range of backgrounds that that we're trying to get come together as a team a position where you take a bunch of competitive people um, and get them to put a team in, in front of themselves um, is easier said than done, and we've been doing a lot of things to try to make that happen as well. The philosophy used at Jamestown, the basketball philosophy applied to Minot State. Our program, our program at Jamestown was really built on just number one, really being a hardworking, tough uh, basketball team, and on both ends of the court, and, and on and off the court, really, and, and just getting guys to understand that to be successful at the college level. You need to put in a lot of time, a lot of time on the court, working on your skills, a lot of time, uh, you know, watching film in the weight room, on the track, all those different things. And, and, you know, that's a big jump from any any player to come from high school or junior college to really understand what it takes to be a high caliber team at any level. And we still need to get our guys to understand that here. They're starting to get an idea, but they still haven't completely understood what it really takes to be successful. Uh, secondly, as far as actual basketball goes, we really bounced the feet uh, at Jamestown. We were in the top. Uh, five in the country and points per game allowed and in field goal percentage allowed and we spent a lot of time here putting together our defensive philosophy how we're going to defend and, and what we need to do to be successful on that just kind of a hard nose basing on a man-to-man -man defense and the ability to, to think the game while you're playing hard and that's a little easier said than done uh, as well and then offensively we have a few different types of types of uh, offenses that we run but uh, we've incorporated a lot of a lot of ball screens and, and uh, X's and O's wise I guess specifically a, a lot of that egg, uh, pick and roll type action to uh, and, and really spend the court correctly and uh, creating lanes to, to attack off the dribble and, and then unless you play unselfishly. So we spent a lot of time in the past and in here as well of just team building and getting guys to understand what their specific role is on the court uh, and how they can make us better because, you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, all, all players aren't created equal. Um, each of them has their own special talent, and when they use their special talents, they can help us out. When they try to do things that they're not capable of, they're just another guy out there that's not helping us, and, and we really need to continue to work on that and have guys to understand that to make us good, you have to be good at what, what your spe special talent is. You don't have to be good at everything. You don't have to do everything well, but you really have to focus on what you're what, what you can do well and and do that every play and we're getting better at that but we need to continue to work on that as well is there any like specific teams excited to play this year yeah you know it's uh, for us it's a it's a whole new league uh, so a lot of the teams are going to be new to us or at least to the guys you know I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of them from the past um, and for me it'll, me personally it'll just be fun to return to a lot of places that I've coached in the past and um, see some
coaches, whether there's, there's some players out there that I recruited to other schools or that I know through the recruiting process. There's uh, some fans out there that I've been friends with that really support one of the other schools in our league. And, and you know, we'll play Jamestown as well, so later we'll play a number of ranked teams. That's my shot to, to go on the road or to have a ranked team come into the Dome. Uh, we'll play out at Montana, which is a Division One school that's, that's going to have a very good team this year. And, uh, you know, there's just a number of different teams throughout the year, as you look at that, that, that are going to be uh, exciting challenges for us and you know that's when we're the new guy in the league and, and you're the, you're the new team that hasn't proven yourself it's really um, a hard look at every team and, and really be excited that, that it's a chance to prove yourself every given night that you go out there so for us um, you know moving forward and especially with the guys you, you know they're still trying to prove themselves to me a little bit and there's still some decisions to be made as far as who's going to play a lot and who's going to play a little and who's not going to play at all and that's a that's a fact of the matter too there's going to be some guys that don't get to play this year and you know when you're on a basketball team you're competitive and you want those minutes so to, to single really one one date out on that calendar or whatever would kind of be doing an injustice to to ourselves and and i think we're just excited to to come out there and have every opportunity to, to prove that we uh, we can do some things, that we can be successful at this level, and that we can play an exciting brand of basketball. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Just you know, I know our team is is uh, I've used the word excited a lot and, and said that over and over, but but that's true. We're just uh, you know we're really happy to be uh, to make the jump to Division Two. Um, we can't wait to get out on the court and play some other competition, um, and, and we know that for us to be su successful, we need as many people involved as possible. So. I uh, just ask for you to come out and, and, uh, and help us be successful by being in the stands, by, by uh, when you see something that you like out there, by getting up and cheering a little bit. And I think, you know, if you come out and watch us play, you'll, you'll at the very minimum see a bunch of guys playing very hard out on the courts. And, and that's something that we're going to take a deep, great deal of pride in. So hopefully hopefully we can get some other people on board and, and uh, have some people that start believing in our team. Coach, well, thanks for your time. And Thanks for the quick interview. Yeah. All right, thank you. That was, that was Coach Merkin. Great guy to talk to. If you have a chance to talk with him, Coach Jamestown, if you didn't hear that. They played the Blue Angels exposition game. They won 81 to 67. It's a good game just to see how the, how they're doing at the first as a, as a group together. So it's a great time to see them. So my second guest is as a senior guard, Anthony Enriquez. Definitely just rolls off the tongue. So here is Anthony Enriquez. Well, I'm here with uh, Anthony Enriquez. It almost rolled off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, Anthony, uh, Coach Matt Merkin stepped in to fill Peach uh, Stewart's uh, shoes this year. Uh, what's it like to uh, work with him? Um, what it's like to work with him is, is, number one, it's pretty intense. Like, he wants things done his way, and he'll, he'll stick with that no matter how long it takes. And then basically it rubs off on all of us. Like, it gets done his way or no way. So it's kind of a domino effect, so, which I kind of like. It was a way different, obviously it's way different than Pete Stewart uh, had his uh, coaching strategy last year. Well, last year's strategy and was um, everything was like inside out, but a lot of things this year is like as far as our defensive pressure and our offense, like it's like we're the aggressor. You dictate everything else. Like we don't react, we do. Like we force other people to react. So it's something new to like the whole program. So which we can all like. I know last year it was a very disappointing season. I guess what are some of the skills that you would like to work on for this year? Well, I had the like opportunity to redshirt last year and just sit back and watch and like with that like far as my aspect it gave me a lot to just look at everything from a different perspective, knowing that what to do, what not to do, mm -hmm. like seeing last year's team, I there's a lot of what not to do and now bring that to this team and where I actually can be of some help to us winning. And, you know, I can take what we learned last year to this. I know you said um, you said you, you said you were uh, redshirt last year watching the uh, watching the the players last year. I guess what did you learn by just watching them? Um, well, what I've learned was um, pretty much like every, take everything like you got to go hard in everything. No matter it's like a simple drill that may not be the like funnest, mm -hmm. it's, but it has to get done. You got to you got to go. Pretend like everything's a game, because when you get the game, it's going to be that much easier. That's what, like, that's something I've learned from last year to this year. And, like, sometimes we slack off on some drills, but, like, think about it now. Like, if you would have went harder in that drill, it, we, that would have been that much easier in the game. So, so you have to apply that to this year. 
Uh, what would be some of your goals for for this year? I mean, I'll be honest with you. Some of my like individual goals, like I'm a senior. It's my last year. I've been here for three years. I want to be remembered. Like that's one thing I can honestly say. I want to be like that number eleven. He was the skinniest guy on the team, but man, that guy could sure play. Like he gave it his all. That's something like my individual goal. Like I want people to remember that. And as far as the team, I just want to. I don't want to be remembered as a, as a really bad team. Like that's I want to like those guys. Every time we played them, it was tough to tough to try and get a win against those guys, no matter what it was. I want us to be known as the team that nobody wants to play because you're gonna come out with bruises and stuff like that. I know uh, Mina transitioned from the NAIA to the uh, NSIC, uh, now D2. How do you describe this upcoming season? Well, uh, I was excited. At, like, recently we we got placed second to last in our polls, which I think is like added motivation. <laughs> so, I mean, that makes me, everyone thinks we're pretty much terrible, <laughs> even though our team's completely different from last year, but that's just... Everyone thinks we're the easy win, so when we actually get on the court with them, they're just going to be have a big surprise. Like those guys are ready to play. Is there any like specific teams you're looking forward to playing this this season? Well, I'm not really familiar with any of the teams in the league, but I we do have a, a scrimmage against UND, and I, I'll be honest, I hate those guys. <laughs> I hate them. Like our previous assistant coach Steve, he like helps them out now, so that's just like more. I've added bonus to play against Tim, like, I mean, and give him the business too, just like the team, so, I don't team I can't stand. I guess, you're from, originally from Washington, I guess, what would you like to do after you graduate from Minot State? I mean, of course, I'd like to pursue basketball if the opportunity arises, but, um, I recently think about moving back, not to where I'm from, Tacoma, but, like, a little, like, far as away from that in Spokane. And just, you know, finding a good good career, something that I'll enjoy, you know, because I put all this hard work into school, mm -hmm. and I want to get something out of it where I enjoy it, something I'll be doing. Is there any, like, fun fact about you that, that you're well known for on the basketball team? Well, there's, there's a couple, but um, I'll give you just a few. Like, for one, everyone knows I like cooking, so they always come to my house and ask, what am, what am I cooking? Like, I'm the chef. I'm the chef of the, of the team. And then that, so they always look like, you cooking tonight? And I'm like, oh, what, what do you guys want to eat? And then, like, another fact that people, oh, I feel like a lot of people know about me is I'm a big shoe guy. Mm -hmm. I have, like, over 100 pairs of shoes. Just in, yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, I'm kind of a girl. Like, don't give me a card. I like changing my shoes up, man. So wearing these team shoes kind of kills me sometimes. We like changing them. Man, that's, that's cool, like, Chef Anthony, you know, like, you yeah. those, those TV shows. Man, that, that is really cool, that's really cool. So, is there anything else you would uh, like to say? Pretty much just, like, look out for us this year. Like, we've turned it up a lot, great. Like, we've been working really hard since the beginning of this summer, off-season, you know, we've put, a, we've put a lot into this year, and just, it's going to show on the court. That was Anthony Enriquez, but he's really good, and he's really fast. Glad I have to catch up with Anthony. He's a great guy to talk to, Chef Anthony. He likes shoes. He's just a fantastic guy to hang out with, so if you do get a chance, you can uh, check out the men's basketball team coming up. But my third guest, I have sophomore guard Matthew Yale. Well, I'm with Matt Yale, and Matt, you played under uh, Coach Stewart last year as well. Now Matt Merkin stepped in to fill his shoes. How's it been like working with Coach Merkin this year? Um, you know, it's a situation we kind of got put in here at the end of the summer. It wasn't something that, you know, a college team wants to go through when it's yeah. getting right up to the beginning of the season. But the way that it came out with Coach Merkin, was you know pretty positive for us we got to sit in on a lot of the interview processes and I think as a team we wanted to go with coach Merkin and that's what everyone ended up going with so that was a good thing for us and the preseason went smoothly you know there's some new things everybody's learning new things with the new new head coach new assistant coaches and everything like that but as far as you know the transition went it's been a good one so far so that was that was good for us 
the team was disappointed when he left. Were you like devastated, like personally? Yeah, it was. It was kind of hard to go through. Um, you know, the first two years of me in this program was with Coach Stewart and developed a really good relationship with him and with the players here. So it was hard to see him go, but at the same time, you know, it's something that you just have mm -hmm. to put behind you. Um, still really good friends with Coach Stewart and uh, plan to keep that relationship going off the basketball court. So it's it's not like he's gone for good for us, <laughs> but uh, you know, just a new coach stepping in and that's okay with us. So make adjustments and make the best out of our situation. I know last year you guys had a very disappointing season. Uh, what are some of the ways you kind of will tr uh, contribute this year? Last year was tough. No team wants to go through anything that happens like that. And, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of work in the off season was put in. So, you know, like any team, you want to get better in the off season and as far as this season, just, you know, help guys, help guys get accustomed to what we do around here. It's kind of a you know, a, a leadership role, mm -hmm. step back and just guys have questions or things aren't going the way they want it to go, you know, just show like, show everybody how we do things around here and, and just develop this program from, from top down, you know, so that's kind of how I want to contribute a little bit. What are some of the goals that you have set for this season? Definitely to contend in the NSIC. I don't think that Minot State really has the respect, you know, in the league, being our first year in the league. And uh, we came out ranked 15th, and I, I truly believe that we are better than than ranked 15th. And, you know, we have to earn that, earn that ranking. So it's something that we're going to work towards mm -hmm. this season and, you know, just... Just let everybody know that even though we're a first-year team, we're going to be able to contend with anybody working hard the whole day. Anything you want to specifically work on like for this season? Uh, definitely just being more consistent in all aspects of the game, offensively and defensively. Just being able to be counted on when you know when something needs to get done. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it. Just kind of be overall more consistent as a player. <laughs> Nobody can predict the future. Uh, what do you think this season will like look like? You know, we got to see a lot of NSIC teams last year and see how this, this conference works. And it's a tough conference from top to bottom. Every team can contend and every team can, can really play basketball. And, you know, it is it is hard to predict the season, but I know that, you know, you always compare to the year before and you want to be better than last year. I think we're going to be a lot better than last year, but that that doesn't just come with another year. You know, you gotta put you got to put your work in every year. You're not just going to get better because you're another year older or you're another year seasoned into the into your basketball career you got to put the work in but i think i think we're going to surprise some people this year and then i know it's uh, your brother daniel came into the program he graduated uh, from lewis and clark berthold uh, what's it like having uh, your brother playing here in my stage or as a team as having him as a team player yeah it's it's fun to finally have him back you know i came to my state a couple of, have played two years here without him but i was still able to follow his high school career because I stayed so close to home, you know, and it was, it was fun that he made the decision to come play here and that we could play again together, so I'm not sure how he's going to go this season, if he's going to redshirt or play, but regardless of what he does, it's been a lot of fun having him in the locker room and just back as a teammate and a brother, so it's been fun and I'm looking forward to the next couple of years getting to play with him some more. Uh, that's, that's fantastic having a, a, a brother uh, play. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, it's it's been fun. And I think that, you know, our family enjoys getting to watch us play together a couple more years at least. So it's going to be good for us. Uh, I would have to say, who who is better in your opinion, your brother, you or, or dad? <laughs> you know what, in the end, I think he's going to be, he's going to be better than I am. I've got, I've got years of experience in college ball on him right now, but he finished with a great high school career, and he he learned so much. He soaks up everything from me and from, you know, just the people around him, and he's he's got a, a good future. So I think he'll definitely surpass me in in the end. But I'll always have that older brother advantage. So we'll see how that one has to go. But is, is there any advice after you graduate, or you know, before you graduate, is there any advice that you're gonna give him? Just the biggest thing is just stay focused. You know buy into the program and believe in, in your teammates and in your coaches and in, in, you know, what you stand for because college basketball is not easy. It's a lot of time. It's a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got to just stay stay believing that, you know, you can do it and you can compete with these guys and, and you know, hard work is going to pay off in the end. So just things like that, I think, will help along the way. It's really helped me. So Any teams you're looking forward to playing, like, oh, I really hope I can play this team you know, down the road or I'm excited to play this team yeah uh you know we're definitely right away the first game we serve them on the calendar was university of mary being the only other nsic team in north dakota and you know we beat them last year and 
it's just kind of a something that we want to stay, you know, we want to play them hard and we want to let everybody know that, you know, Minot State can compete in NSIC just as good as Mary can. And, you know, a lot of the teams that we played close last year and then just kind of ran out of gas at the end. So they were one of the top teams and we played them pretty close until the end and then Bemidji was a top team and we played them really close until the end and just teams like that, you know, teams that compete in the NSIC that, you know, that are the top four or five teams in the conference every year, kind of excited to play them and see where we stack up and see what we can do against teams like that that have proven themselves in the NSIC. So if we want to be proven, we've got to be able to hang with the teams that have shown it in the past years. So I think that's the game that I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, is there anything else you would like to add? I don't think so. Thanks. It's good. All right. Well, thanks, Matt, yeah, for... Uh, for this interview, and I, I do hope that the team goes or the team does well this year. I mean, I, obviously it's going to be a huge. Uh, dif- I mean, it's going to be difficult and huge. It's a huge step for us, and it, it's, it's going to be difficult is. too. Yeah, but I think you know it's a good step for Minot State. You know, our athletic teams are all kind of struggling a little bit, but you know, it's. I think it's a good move for us. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. Well, all right. thanks again. Thank you. Yep. That was Matt Yale. Uh, as I said, his brother Dan plays here for Minot State University. So, uh, it could be fun to for Dan and, and uh, Matt to enjoy playing with each other. Anyway, so anyway, that is Beaver Chat. Thanks for listening. If you miss any of my podcast for this month of November, you can log on to msubeavers.com. You can log on to msubeavers.com, as I said, and you can also go to MSU Beavers YouTube feed for that. So anyway, for Nathan Bart, this is Beaver Chat. Until next time.